Monday and welcome to another Squadcast. I'm Camille and joining me as always is Caboose and Steve. Us three always break it down right here on the Squadcast on our latest thoughts on the hottest topics in the industry. And this week we are talking about the Game Awards going in depth and it's a lot to take in. So we brought in our friend Malik. Welcome back to the show. What's up everybody? How's it going? Good. Good. Are you guys excited for the Game Awards? Obviously, it's airing on uh, December 10th, Thursday. It's like mm -hmm. just around the corner. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm pretty excited. I hope for more Gotham Knights news, please. <laughs> more Gotham Ooh. Knights putting it out there in the atmosphere. Just Chat, I hope you guys are circle. excited. Yeah, just su <laughs> let's summon it. Chad, let's yeah. to get get together a summoning circle and like let's just summon Gotham Knights uh, just for Caboose, Breath of the Wild, two yes. in. Right there, with you, yeah. right there with you, Camille. But we'll talk about more of our predictions, our wants, our asks. Uh, but for now, chat, you know what it's all about. So get your thoughts ready. Let your voice be heard in chat. If there's some funny cl clippable moments, like that one right there, <laughs> you can clip them and share them with us. Uh, squad stay uh, on Twitter and Instagram. Or um, you know what? Just let us know that we're we're not funny in chat. That that always helps too. Uh, people tell me I'm but not. But I am funny. funny. <laughs> okay, sure, sure. <laughs> All right, let's get into it because there is a lot, and I don't want us to um, have to cut any of these um, nominations or categories out because of time. So we're mm -hmm. going to start off with the esports categories. Now, this is something the Game Awards what in the earlier stages like was non-existent, but now mm -hmm. esports is such a um, thriving community and it's such like a a glamour world i feel for people that are outside of the industry they hear esports e and they hear money you know like right. so they put yeah. together. so it only makes sense that we're going to see more uh, categories within esports the first one being best esports team and this is recognizing um a specific esport team not the full organization uh judged by the most outstanding for performance and conduct and this is obviously within 2020. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The nominations are Dam One Gaming, Dallas Empire, G2 Esports, San Francisco Shock, and Team Secret. Now, um, I know a little esports, but I don't know a lot. How about you, boys? <laughs> you, no. you know, I would say you know, I haven't watched a lot of Dota or League of Legends this year. But okay. G2's journey, from what I've heard and from what I've talked to, you know, some of my other uh, colleagues about has been amazing. Personally, I'm a little bit biased towards the San Francisco Shock. I started out covering Overwatch. So, you know, that's where my heart will always be. I, I think in terms of storyline, the San Francisco Shock have done amazing this year by maintaining their championship title. Uh, but at the same time, League of Legends is a, is a more global esports, right? It has a, a bigger impact, I would think, uh, than something like Overwatch. Uh, so I kind of have to give it to G2. Okay. I, I'm pretty well versed on this topic, so yeah. I'm just going to go with what Malik said. <laughs> hey, don't be stealing my points. I need those caboose. <laughs> no, I, I'm going with G2. <laughs> no, this is not fair. You can't just go, well, actually, I'm going to go with G2 too, so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <both>. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you know what? I, then I'll go spicy. I'll go San Francisco Shock. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so technically, we all went in on Malik's, uh, you know, uh, babies. So G2 and San Francisco Shock. So yeah. uh, Malik, if you're wrong, we're coming for you. Well, now, chat, fair enough. <laughs> chat, uh, I just want to make it clear because I may have not made it clear at the beginning. We're going to actually uh, be predicting individually who we think is going to take each category. And next week, we're actually going to look at the winners and see who came out on top uh, amongst the four of us in terms of being the best psychic in the group. So uh, look forward to that. Um, Malik, a lot of pressure on you for this category. And I feel the next right. one. Um, so we have best esports host. Golden okay. boy, hands down. The guy, the guy is hilarious. Wow, he, did you watch gun. his? Did you watch his show with The Rock? It was yes. a, it was great. Golden Boy is my man. Like I gotta give him props. He is like all over the place. He's, He's all across different esports. Exactly. 
esports host, yeah. like he is one of the people that immediately comes to mind. But like, hold on. Uh, so what are, what are all the nominations? Uh, yeah, I don't Sorry. But um, so this is the best host or commentator of esports events, both in venue and through broadcast. So like online um, in 2020 and irrespective of game or language. So um, we mm. have Alex Golden Boy Mendez, Alex mm. Machine Richardson, Eve J. So Joe, oh my God, can you guys help me with this word? This one? I, I'm maybe not sure. Shokes, right? maybe? Shokes. Shokes. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, and James Dash Patterson, Joran Shiver Bender Hagen. Oh my God! I am Good. sorry, I am, every one of you. I, I am the yeah. worst at pronouncing um, <laughs> names. That it's just bad. I'm sorry. Here's your clippable <laughs> moment. You did great. Yeah, there you go. There's a clippable yeah, moment. But they yeah. they really are in this category, focusing on hosts that they feel um, really paved the way. And it's great that they're acknowledging hosts that are even outside of you know, English broadcast, because mm. when you think of esports, because we're in North America, we do think very English heavy. But then obviously, when you look at where esports has its um, start, it's a very international um, community, right? So it, it's great to kind of recognize that. I do agree with Malik here. I do think um, Golden Boy is probably going to take it. Um, you think about you know, a standout esports host, you think Golden Boy, you think, oh, you know, right. he's the OG. He's and the when Golden you continue Boy. looking at his career, he is one of those hosts and very few hosts that continues to work even outside the space um, as a commentator. And and he wouldn't have got that show with The Rock if he wasn't comment, uh, hosting for yes. esports yeah. events. Mm -hmm. So I think that's very trailblazing in what he's done and what he continues to do. And I'm hoping that he um, takes this category for that recognition. Yeah. He's, he's just keeps pushing the envelope. And again, just as we've mentioned, he's, uh, he's such a, such a household name when it comes to esports hosts or just anybody in terms of like being a commentator for different esports, you know, we've seen him do, do stuff for all sorts of different games. And then, you know, just uh kind of getting out of stratosphere starting to do stuff on television with the rock like that's mm -hmm. such a such a huge leap so i definitely think he deserves the recognition for that yeah yeah i totally agree uh i think he, again he's the one that pushed outside of the outside into the mainstream so i i, mm -hmm. I think he deserves it mm -hmm. yeah if he doesn't get it it'll be dash uh because the more if you think of more of like a global audience uh dash might have him beat there but i mean in, in, on the na side I, I think golden boy uh could take it gotcha all right so i think we're all saying golden boy for this one <laughs> i think so all right. all right but it was actual informed opinions this time. it was, it was <laughs> like whatever license. whatever Whatever he yeah. says, we're going for that. Exactly. I feel exactly. like they should also add to like all the esports categories, like best like personality. Like it's weird because I kind of hate personality awards because it's like, oh, we all have unique personalities. It's hard mm -hmm. to put those up to competition. But then you think of like esports personalities that really stand out, or like not just mm -hmm. in the hosting uh, perspective, but like kind of like how the content creation. A category works I, I just feel I, like maybe no i agree and this will just be my quick little uh soapbox for esports is that people don't realize that there's that there's color casters there's analysts and then there's hosts in esports and right. and each one does a completely different function uh, mm -hmm. and that's something that uh has kind of been wrapped in one in traditional sports but with esports because it's been separated you've allowed these people to focus on something and become the absolute best at that because they are like in the overwatch league uh they have their own specific analyst that everybody knows and so i think that it would be nice like you said camille uh to see like maybe like an analyst uh award and like a personality award or like a color caster yeah, award sure. yeah i could i would actually love to see a little more of like a separation there because uh the reason that i would vote for someone like golden boy for this category is because he does he is like that jack of all trades you know i feel like he can take the role of you know either the color caster the commentator the host and does a great job in either of those um, and that's why, like, you know, just right off the top of my head, I'm like, oh, yeah, Golden Boy. But I, I agree, Malik, it would be nice to see, like, a separation of that because there is, like, 
there there is very specific terms for the way that people run these shows or these esports uh, tur tournaments, whatever it may be. Um, so to see some recognition through all facets would be nice. And adding on right. to that, I think that having more of these categories helps legitimize esports in the greater gaming industry. Whereas a lot of people, mm. I think, unfortunately, just kind of skim these, skim over these ones, and they're like, "Well, I don't really, I'm not involved in esports, so I'm not really going to pay that much attention." So seeing more of it would right. be nice. Right. And I think yeah. that's what we've kind of seen with the like with as the years go by with the game awards, right? We yeah. we see them more fleshed out that category because I remember at the beginning like some of their nominations and like who the awards went to like it just didn't make sense. You could tell that the committee maybe didn't fully understand esports. They were just going for like those buzz personalities or words sure. or organizations. Yeah. Um, and mm. voting for them. So it's great that we have more categories here. They just need a few more. Right, yeah. Yeah, I agree. And it's interesting too, uh, before we get to the next category, which is best esports game, um, because I feel like there was a lot of discussion at the beginning when the Game Awards started introducing more esports into it. I feel like it kind of was a clash between the more casual gaming um, based or general gaming based audience um, compared to the competitive gaming and some people feeling like esports didn't necessarily belong in the game awards. Um, right. But it's great to see that they're still paving the way despite um, some people's beliefs uh, to have them mm -hmm. included because we all are a part of the gaming community at the end. Yeah, I really, no, I really want to see sure. next year. I want to see like a, a fighting, like someone in the fighting world, uh, make it onto this list because that would be because I mean, like someone like Sonic Fox deserves to be on here. Like, yeah. All right, Caboose yeah. too. Caboose, let's get Caboose <laughs> up there. <laughs> Caboose definitely deserves it, man. What the hardest working man? <laughs> Caboose for Game Awards 2021. I'm calling it. Let's make it happen. <laughs> for campaigning <laughs> right now. <laughs> all right, let's get to best esports game. This is for the game that has delivered the best overall esports experience to players, inclusive of tournaments, community support, and content updates, irrespective of genre or platform. Uh, you have Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, Counter Strike, Global Offensive, Fortnite, League of Legends, Valorant. Wow. My, my, my heart's in Valorant. Wait, Call of oh. Duty Modern Warfare, they had a tournament that doesn't even count among the pro players anymore. Like, their their championship <laughs> tournament, the pro players don't count because yeah, it was held online. It, like, Counter-Strike, <laughs> it's up there. Fortnite, I'd rather not talk about. It's, it's, it's a sensitive <laughs> subject. Fortnite is a bad eSport, but... Yeah. They give out a lot of money. <laughs> they give out a lot of money. But I remember, like, when Fortnite was starting out as an esport, I was like, "This, this, there's so there's such a recipe for success here." You know, to to have a hundred people in the battlefield, all playing extremely competitive. It's all about the last man standing. Like, it, it definitely had there was potential there. But first of all, just a terrible spectator <laughs> yeah. from Epic. Just absolute. Like they put all their money into the prize pool and not a dime into the actual presentation yeah. of the esport. So like that was rough. Um, it was a rough start, start yeah. for Fortnite uh, because, yeah. you know, just plus some people were having said, like server issues too, yes, you know? I, I think the problem with where Fortnite was when they first started was they were focusing more on the celebrity aspect and because they had such yeah. success with that in terms of promoting the game and making Fortnite yeah. what it is, when mm -hmm. they went into the competitive space, they tried to bring that into the competitive space, but didn't really have a guideline. Like they didn't know how they were going to make Fortnite competitive. So you had all these random events that were happening that had a crap ton of money, but then it didn't really matter because the points were all over the place. You didn't know who would move. Like it had no yeah. organization at all. Um, I don't, and because of that, that's why I never really, well, I don't like Fortnite. Well, it's not that I don't like Fortnite. <laughs> I've never been into Fortnite. And because it was so messy at the start, I never really kept up to date in terms of what happened mm -hmm. on the competitive scene. So I don't know if that got any better. Like, like, do you have any insight in terms of how Fortnite works now? It's it's grown but fortnite doesn't treat it because when they when they did their first like championship in their tournament I, this i can't take 
credit for this, and it's and it's a very mean way to put it. But Fortnite is a bit farm that extracts parents' credit card information and pogs. Like that that is what it is designed to do. They they it's the skins, it's the streamer aspect, and it's the content creator aspect. Like you mentioned, it's yeah. getting those those big names. They as as an esport, not really. As a spectator sport, as like a and as an entertainment facet, I think Fortnite deserves praise. But in terms of like the competitive edge, it's got to go to like CS, League of Legends, or Valorant. I, I don't yeah. see, I, I just don't see like the the competitive integrity there for the game yet. I I am gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with League of Legends winning this one, just because I think honestly that is the safe bet. Um, yeah. part of me wants to go Valorant as well because Valorant is just like it's this emerging game, just came out this year, you know, definitely has a big presence online and definitely has a pretty solid esports presence, of course, because of a lot of the similarities that it draws from CSGO. Um, mm-hmm. but I think just you know, like League of Legends is just so massive, you know, of, of an esport yeah. and it continues to dominate. So I think that uh, I'm gonna go with League of Legends just because that's a safe pick. I'm playing for points. Okay, <laughs> and I'm right there with you, Caboose. I'm also going to League of Legends. They won last year, so I, d- I don't feel like they did anything differently this year. I think that they've just com- uh, committed to... They did lots differently. Um, They killed it in terms of their community support and the content that they're creating around community. But that's what you- I mean. They kept yeah. doing that from last year. They, they haven't yeah. d- dropped the ball in any way, so I, I just feel like it's just an up- upward trajectory. Yeah, exactly. Could- Factory. so yeah it, it, it's got to go to them although you know i do get, uh give a shout out to valorant for just breaking into uh the esports industry but mm, not a yeah. word. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. playing for points here playing for points uh, i respect it points. <laughs> uh, i i want to you know i'm just a call of duty fan so I'm, i want to say call of duty but the competitive scene definitely has its struggles it's it's still so it's not new, but I think where where they introduced Warzone and like okay. how they're implementing that competitive scene and like there's just so much that they have to work out um, that it, it it needs work. Please, please, Activision, mm. work on it, make it better, yeah. um, make more content around it, um, make sure that the game doesn't glitch. It glitches. Get rid a lot. of skill based matchmaking. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. There you go. That would be great. Huge. I think. I'm- with League of Legends as well. It's a legacy brand. It knows what it is. It continues to do what it does. And it's building on that rapidly uh, as it explores music and as it explores mm-hmm. like just its a- AR concerts and all that stuff mm-hmm. um, because mm-hmm. it knows that it has the competitive side down pat. So uh, League of Legends is it for me as well. Right. Now. As we move forward, we're going to uh, explore the best esports events. This is recognizing an event across single or multiple dates that delivered a best of class experience for participants and the broadcast audience. Okay, so we have Blast Premier Spring 2020 European Finals, Call of Duty League Championship 2020, IEM Katowice uh, 2020, League of Legends World Championship. 2020 and overwatch league grand finals 2020 wow i would I mean so malik what are you thinking <laughs> <laughs> i would look if if we're gonna be honest all right as much as i would like and i've i voted on the website for the overwatch league grand finals 2020 but i know it's not mm-hmm. gonna win league of legends worlds is gonna win because it's it's worlds i the I don't think there's really much you need to say besides the fact that it's worlds. Like it, it is yeah. one of the biggest, if not the biggest, esport event besides TI. Now, if TI would have happened this year, I think it would have beat worlds. But they're postponing it to next year, so it's it's gonna go to low. Yeah, as somebody who's uh, again not like as well versed in the topic, with like you, I still just I know the term league. Yes, like I know because it's that big Mm -hmm. um, and that recognizable. So on that merit alone, I would probably go with the same thing. I'm not literally just trying to be like, yo, Malik, what are you thinking? I'm going to go with that one. Um, I'm taking my points. (laughs) (laughs) I'm messing around. But like, you know, when when I think about it um, from like the the outside looking in on this specific category, that's the one where it's like, 
of all the like of all the tournaments that's listed of all of what's being mentioned here it's the one where i was like oh i've heard of that so yeah. that's probably the one i gotta go with i agree i think it just goes hand in hand with best esports game as well so yeah league of legends yeah world championship for me as well i know we're, we're keeping it boring so far but i think we'll we'll get to some real discourse soon i uh, yeah i'm oh, gonna yeah. go with league as well um it does go with you know the best esport game as well as just everything that i mentioned that they're doing in terms of music their presentation their performance like this is a category that's recognizing an event for their experience um for not only the players but their broadcast audience right so yeah. Um, they kill it time and time. Everyone knows the league song. Like everyone knows the performances as they're happening for the world championship because they're mm -hmm. singing along because, you know, they put right to put it in our head <laughs> months <laughs> before we could sing along to their opening ceremony. So uh, it's definitely going to be uh, the world championships for this one. Mm, yeah. I agree. Okay. This one's a bit of a harder one, especially for, um, you know, some people like myself, Caboose and Steve, who may not be too well versed in esports, uh, but mm -hmm. best esports coach. Okay. This is an interesting category. I think that they included. I don't think they've had this last year. Did they? I, Do you guys know? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. Which is, I don't which remember. Is I'm not sure. Which is interesting because when you think of traditional sports, yes, they do have categories for coaches um, obviously like you have your mvp and then your coach of the year so it's great that coaches are getting that recognition here because i feel like um they're not something we often talk about when we're thinking of esports so this is a category that's going to the esports coach judged to be the most outstanding for performance and conduct mm. okay so we have zonic crusty grabs zepha and rambo Okay. You exactly. Know, I'm not, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm, not, I'm not super versed in the all of these coaches. Uh, I know that Grabs is uh, G2's uh, League of Legends coach, uh, and that I'm familiar with Krusty from uh, Overwatch League. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to give it to Grabs. I think I think G2 made a really good showing uh, in League of Legends this year. And for a game that has been dominated uh, by the Asiatic region for so long, for G2 to make it as far as they did, um, especially, you know, last year earning runner-up and then coming into this year, um, I, I'm going to have to give it to Grabs. Rambo's yeah, got a pretty cool name, so I'll go Rambo. <laughs> Namesake, you know, yeah. for my for my research, um, to make like as an, an educated guess as I possibly could, I would probably go grabs. Yeah, yeah, uh, it was yeah. your research, and that's based also, on my uh, oh, Malik's ex there, no yeah. extensive research. <laughs> uh, I was up late at night, uh, sure. looking up clips for all of these coaches, and uh, no, <laughs> I honestly, <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> I, I, like, just to be completely transparent, again, this is the stuff. Like, I, I love watching esports. I love seeing, uh, especially I, I like that there's a category like this to provide recognition for the people who aren't necessarily playing the game, but are watching it and trying to help their team, you know, perform better. I think that's always something that deserves recognition in some way, shape, or form in any sport, esports or not. Um, and so I like this as a category in general. And I mean, what do you want me to do? We're, we're playing for points here. <laughs> okay we're playing for points here all right i'm got i gotta go grab honestly as soon as malik said that grabs was the coach for g2 i was like putting two and two together i was like yeah okay i gotta go with him then <laughs> there you go and you know what you're right though like you think uh we were talking about team of the year and it would be g2 so obviously their coach has to be really great too exactly um, so I'm going to go with Grabs. Grabs is also a coach I'm familiar with, so that's also why I'm going with him, uh, which is interesting because I don't follow League heavily. Um, but you just you just know it. Again, right? Putting all of these co like content creators, all their things out there, the people in their eSport out there that we just know the names, and we, we put them up for our point uh, <laughs> towards this category. Exactly. Now, we're going to move on to best esport athlete. This is an esport athlete judged to be the most outstanding for performance and conduct in 2020. And that's irrespective of game. Okay. So we have Crimsix, 
Showmaker, Canon, um, Shotzi, and Zywood. Zywoo, Zywood. sorry. Zywood. Zywood. <laughs> I was like, is that a D or is that an O? Um, I wear glasses, guys. I'm sorry. Um, but... <laughs> Okay, all right, Malik, you guys. No, you guys. I want all of you guys to make your predictions wow. first, and then and then I'll give you guys my prediction. I want to shake. Malik. We're shaking it up, guys. Let's go. Like this. Okay. Well, right. Malik, that's kind of rude. <laughs> um, but I guess I'll go with Crim Six. Uh, I know Crim Six as like as a player, um, and I like Call of Duty. There we go. That's that's yeah. the only reason I'm putting that there. All right. Yeah. I'm, well, let's go, go, go ahead. Go. I'm just going to say, I, I'm most familiar with Shotzi. Again, Call of Duty, uh, I've seen him perform uh, in the mm. game, and he, he always comes out um, relatively on top. I, I've seen him uh, perform very well uh, in competition, so I, I'm going to go with him. Uh, now, listen, I'm just going off of what I had said previously in regards to why I think League of Legends is the best esports game, so I'm going to have to pick one of these esports players as the, mm. the best esports athlete, and... Flip of a coin, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Let's go with uh, Showmaker. There you go. Nice. Well, I will say that my top two, all right, was Crim6 and Shotzi. Oh! I know. I'm a Call of Duty hater, but look, Shotzi is a kid that has so much personality and so much potential and in a game that is changing constantly and where he went from playing halo to now being on a championship call of duty team i think he has such a bright future i think he has made a name for himself this year and i'm really excited uh to see how far he can go crim six obviously has a decorated past and you know he's kind of a household name uh, but i gotta give it to the young gun shotzi now uh, other than that though I would have picked Canyon because his performance at the Worlds was just Damn insane. He, he's he's nuts. He's one of the top League of Legends players in the world, hands down. Wow. Um, is there, okay, so this is a pretty stacked uh, category. I want to, like, because, okay, you're looking at the games, right? And I think that's something that people don't often recognize with Call of Duty, Malik, that you mentioned. The game changes so much for a call of duty like these players yeah. to stay on top of it i really do hope um like because i feel like that gets so overshadowed by like more of a legacy game like we right. um where the game doesn't change as frequently like and i'm not i'm not trying to you know knock any player's capability but that's just another skill set that you have to have in terms of making sure that you're on top of your performance, but also able to adapt to a change that's ongoing. So I really do hope a Call of Duty player, either of them, takes it just to give that recognition. Mm, now, yeah. throughout the esports category, there is one, one huge uh, community that I feel is missing so much. Uh, Caboose, you probably feel it too. The fighting game community is yeah. getting no love at the Game Awards, why do you guys think that is? Well, I, I, we should say that Sonic Fox did very recently win. Uh, it was it best esports athlete, and last, last year, year was, it? was it last year or the year before when he like oh, okay. that? What a, what an incredible oh, speech so they had! About, yeah, he did have a really great speech, but we're talking about this year, right? And right, like, right, right, right. I mean, it, it feels like they gave him they gave the fighting this this could be totally off base right but it feels like they gave the fighting community their win and then they're like okay let's get back to the esports that are racking up the numbers but when you look at when you look at longevity and community look the dota community has been around for a long time but they are they are very toxic very very toxic <laughs> the the fighting community on the other hand i've seen some you know toxic aspects for but for the most part it seems like a tight-knit community that is all about inclusivity uh mm -hmm. and supporting each other and and just like being your best and i would absolutely love to see some more like fighting you know fighting organizations and some more fighting players like show up on this list because they deserve it they absolutely do that's a that's a sector of esports that often gets overlooked it does yeah you bring up a, a lot of great points uh, but i also think that it comes down to who's nominating um, for each category. I think a lot of the outlets that were asked to uh, submit nominations are more of the mainstream. I don't think that an IGN or a Polygon has that fighting game community um, mm -hmm. spokesperson there. Um, 
to kind of you know push for that so i think that a lot that's why you see a lot of these are just call of duty league of legends you know the ones that just pop into everyone's mind first and foremost and then mm. you know the people who are dedicated to covering esports they don't really have that opportunity to kind of fight for their um genre if you will yeah as unfortunate as it may be and as much as i love fighting games and you know having been a part of the fgc and even organized tournaments myself uh, at the end of the day like I can only recognize that when compared to something like a League of Legends, CSGO, Valorant, um, those are like juggernauts in esports. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't think fighting games is so far behind, but I think it, it is behind in comparison to those esports. I love the FGC. I think it's an awesome community. And the best part about fighting games as an esport is pretty much everybody knows everybody and it feels like one massive family. Um, but again, like you just... You have to recognize and 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 read the terrain uh, and just looking at everything like hand over fist League of Legends is just a massive esports or massive esport. Uh, Valorant is is so big and and has such a huge following, largely in part as well again because of the fact that it draws so many similarities from CS:GO and then CS:GO yeah. another classic huge esport. And they um, also they also poached like half of the CS:GO scene. Yes, <laughs> but we won't yes. talk about that. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and so uh, I appreciate that, at least in some capacity, we've seen some recognition for fighting games. And I do hope in the future there is a little more recognition for fighting games in some of these categories. Like, I think a best esports athlete could absolutely have some members in the FGC added in there. Yeah. There are some there are some athletes in the FGC, whether it's people who play something like Grand Blue, Tekken 7, which takes an insane amount of skill, even MK11, who could absolutely be on that list. Yeah. And to, to add to that point, too, I think and I'm not I'm not sure who uh, won last year, but I remember that she wasn't nominated is that uh, VK Lyon. Uh, she's a Hearthstone player. She was mm. not only the first Chinese female to win an esports uh, world like championship uh, title, but she was also the the first female to win a championship in Hearthstone. The first female to mm. win a championship in a uh, in a Blizzard game. Like they they need to start paying attention to the smaller esports as well that are making huge waves because there there are some smaller scenes that are starting to develop these personalities and and really start to push the envelope of what is a defined esport and, and who can play and who can compete at the highest level and that's one thing that i love about esports mm-hmm. and that's the thing like i feel like um with the categories um for like best esports athlete right like you're still including those really big titles but that's a category right there you could have those more niche communities come in and really showcase their talents because like something like that and that player doing really um trailing the way for other women in esports like i feel like that that should be recognized because she broke a lot of records 